you so much, your majesties, ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's really my great pleasure to be part of this very important Dementia Forum. And I'm pleased to see the great interest and commitment from stakeholders all over the world. I'd like to thank Queen Sylvia and the organizers for this initiative to create a forum for reflections and discussions on this important subject, to create a joint understanding of dementia and its global effects. The population around the world is rapidly aging, as we just saw, and in Sweden, the number of elderly people over the age of 65 is expected to increase by 800,000 to 2050. The largest increase is in the age group 80 and older. And this is not unique to Sweden. We see the same pattern in many countries in the world. The risk of developing dementia raises with increasing age. The number of people with dementia will therefore also increase after 2020, when the large number of people born in the 1940s reach a high age. Until 2050, the number of people with dementia is expected to double, which means a great future challenge for society as a whole. The aim of the government's policy is that women and men with dementia should be able to age safely as far as is possible with the maintenance independence. Women and men with dementia should, despite the disease, be able to live an active life, have influence in society and over their everyday lives. She or he should be treated with respect and have access to good care and care that is equal. Health and social care must also be such quality that relatives can trust that their family members get the support that they need. For women and men with dementia, it can be difficult to express their will and their contact with relatives can be invaluable support in designing the health and social care of the person with dementia. The government's national strategy for dementia care aims to provide the conditions for improvements in several strategically important areas. The efforts of the national strategy are ultimately aimed at improving conditions in various ways for women and men with dementia and their relatives. An important area is the collaboration between the health care and social care. Today, unfortunately, Ineffective collaboration between regions and municipalities entails a risk that a woman or man diagnosed with dementia is not offered the support that he or she needs. According to the National Board of Health and Welfare, the most common problem for people with dementia is difficulties in collaboration between regions and municipalities. To enable a better collaboration, the government has tasked the National Board of Health and Welfare with promoting and spreading a standardized care pathway model for people diagnosed with dementia. The model will be presented in June. The aim is to make it easier for the municipalities and regions to organize the health and social care of women and men with dementia. The model will help ensure that people with dementia are offered the right support and the right interventions at the right time throughout the course of their disease. Another important area is about staff. For women and men with dementia, it is important that there are enough staff who have knowledge of their needs. The government has invested in strengthened staffing in elderly care with the aim of increasing the quality and safety of individuals. The purpose has been to increase security and quality, not just for the recipients in the care of the elderly, but again, also for their relatives. For me, it's obvious that we need to focus on the views and needs of the families. Families must be confident that their voice is heard 
and that their loved ones receive the health care and social care they need. Dementia affects not only the person who has been diagnosed, but also their family and friends. The Swedish Family Care Competence Center gather and disseminate knowledge about how to develop the social services provided to families. It's essential that staff understand the importance of communication, information, and training for families. Ensuring the staff has the right skills, it's also essential for municipalities and regions to be able to offer good health and social care. The National Board of Health and Welfare emphasizes in a report that there is a lack of knowledge about dementia diseases in all occupational categories within health care and social care. In this context, I'd like to emphasize the important work initiated by Her Majesty, starting Sylvia Hemmet, to promote dementia skills among health care professionals. Since Sylvia Hemmet was founded, invaluable efforts have been done to raise knowledge about dementia. Knowledge and competence are central issues, and I'm therefore glad to announce that tomorrow, the government will present a package of messages Measures to increase the knowledge about dementia among the staff working in dementia and elderly care. Within the package, the National Board of Health and Welfare is to develop a guideline for participation in daycare. The purpose of daycare activities is to offer people with dementia a community, an activation to give them the opportunity to stay in their home and at the same time offer relatives a temporary relief. Daycare had the highest priority in the Swedish national guidelines for people with dementia, but today there is no guidance on content of daycare activities and how daycare can be organized. Furthermore, the government is investing in developing the national quality registers on dementia. As a third part of this package, the government is increasing funding for the Swedish Dementia Center, which is the national competence center for dementia diseases. The increased funding will also be used to develop a new web education, Dementia ABC 2.0. Over 140,000 people have undergone the first version of Dementia ABC, which was introduced nine years ago. Funds should also be used to develop a training model that means that participating units are certified the certification symbol is a star, and this star is valid for one year and shows that at least 80% of the staff have undergone various courses to increase their competence in dementia. To conclude, the fact that we live longer and mostly healthier lives is a fantastic achievement for the welfare society. However, Aging population also means that we must adapt society to a new situation. There will be increase in demand for primary health care and long-term care. There are great possibilities in an increased use of assisted technology to support older women and men's independence and their possibilities to live an active life. And I am convinced that international cooperation in exchange of experience across national borders, such as this event, is the best way to enhance the lives of people living with dementia and their families all over the world. So I wish you all good luck in your important work and also the best for the conference. Thank you.